Hello everyone and welcome to Yoga with Rachel. Today we explore a very popular yoga posture, downward facing dog, or sometimes just called down dog. So I don't think I've ever been to a Hatha yoga class where down dog was not in it. So therefore I do believe that it is good to know the ins and the outs of this posture. In terms of the benefits, while well, it's really great for stretching out the legs, especially the hamstrings, the calves and our ankles, and it also offers a lovely stretch spines and shoulders. I love this posture because it gives me the opportunity to bring my head below my heart. This kind of invites more soothing and calming uh, feeling. Again, we all have different experiences on the mat, so perhaps some of you may resonate with that and some may not. It's all good. So in terms of props, please bring along a blanket with you and two yoga blocks. If yoga blocks are not available, two thick books. Alrighty, let's wig our tails and get moving. Hello friends. So we can transition into downward facing dog in a number of ways. We can start off in tabletop position, extended child's pose, puppy posture, or even plank pose. Today we're going to start off in extended child's pose for a couple of reasons. First, extended child's pose offers a lovely stretch to our back body as well as our shoulders. And also I find that when we are in downward facing dog for a long period of time, it can get pretty heated. So I want to start off low to the ground, just to cool on down first before we rise on up. Okay, let's do it. Come to a tabletop position. Stacking your hands underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your wrist points. Come to sit back on your heels. Walk your hands forward. I personally like to walk my hands so that way they're off to the long edges of my mat. This is really helpful for when we transition into downward facing dog. Now melt your chest towards your thighs, release your forearms and elbows to the mat, and then last release is the crown or your forehead to the mat. We're only going to be here for five breath cycles, so make the most of it. Perhaps you find a gentle rock, side to side. A nice little sway. Okay. When you are satisfied, find some stillness. Carve a line with your nose to look forward. Gaze directly between your hands. Curl your toes under. Now let's just take a quick look at what our hands are doing right now. So in downward facing dog, we're really gonna, gonna wanna spread our fingers nice and wide, pressing into our fingertips. And when we do this, this action actually lifts our palms slightly away from the mat. Press into the fleshy part that exists between your index finger and your thumb. This will help take some pressure off of the wrist as we move through down dog. Now lift your elbows away from the mat. Shine your elbow creases forward so that way now they are facing the front edge of the mat. So the front of the room. I like to imagine that I'm opening up a jar of honey or a cookie jar. Why not? <laughs> okay. I'm just noticing that my shoulders are creeping up to my ears. If this is happening to you, let's all loop our shoulders up and down our back body to create some space between our ears and the shoulders. Tuck in our chin slightly to create some length in the back of the neck. Okay, so when we transition into downward facing dog, I want us to move really slow as if we're moving through molasses. So. Um, draw your belly button in towards your spine. Pretend as if someone is lifting you up by your tail. So you're going to lift one knee up away from the mat, followed by the other. Lifting, lifting, lifting your sit bones towards the sky until you have arrived in downward facing 
dog. When you get there, melt your chest towards your thighs, gaze directly between your feet. Feel free to keep a generous bend in your knees to start. And as we work to grow the practice, we can begin to straighten through the legs. Keeping a generous bend in our knee is really great because sometimes when we're in downward facing dog, our upper body, our spine is kind of rounding forward. So you really want to create a beautiful, nice line of energy that radiates and flows from the tip of our tailbone all the way to the crown of our head and from our tailbone all the way to our feet. So we'll just keep that in mind. Um, our gaze is between our toes. Simply be, or sorry, between our feet, not between our toes, between our feet, simply because um, we're trying to avoid a crunching sensation or movement happening in the neck. Again, that kind of cuts off that beautiful line of energy. Press into your fingertips to take pressure off of the wrist, kind of like you're gripping your mat. Find any kind of organic movement that works well for your body. I personally like to pedal out my feet. You may notice that we are making an upside down V shape with our bodies. Very similar to when we are in boat pose, just a different orientation. Perhaps you play around with turning your big toes in slightly just to create some more um, engagement in the legs, some more work. And finally, if your heels do not reach the mat, no worries. I have been doing this for three years now and my heels still do not reach the mat. And I used to get mad at myself. Like I actually used to like cram my body into the shape. And I have to say it created a lot of tension, a lot of strain in my muscles. So I've started to embrace my uniqueness. Um, I also realized that perhaps I just need to work on mobility in my ankles. So it's just good information. Okay, so if you're like, I'm not enjoying this, this is terrible. <laughs> um, here are some of our options that we can explore together. So you can come down to lower onto your knees. You can take your blankie and place it to where your heels are placed on the mat. So this is a great way to lift the earth up to meet us. Um, and you can also use your yoga blocks or thick books and place them where your hands were. Angel's curious. She's wondering what I'm doing right now. <laughs> okay. And when you place your hands on your yoga blocks, make sure that you're gripping them. So very similar to that action that we were doing on our mats. So you can try that out. Okay. You can see if that works well for your body. If it does keep it. If it doesn't, get rid of it. <laughs> you know, that's the, that's the joy, the beauty of an at-home practice. You can try things, you can experiment, and you know, if something works, beautiful, great. If something doesn't, well, whatever. At least you tried. Okay, by now you're probably cursing my name and saying like, oh my God, Rachel, I just wanna get out of this pose. <laughs> if you are, I'm so sorry. Anyways, um, let's all just take one final deep breath in together. And on our exhale, begin to shift forward, coming up onto your tiptoes. Oh my goodness, did I just trick us? Now we're in plank. <laughs> we, we're not gonna be here long. Now let's just lower down onto our knees, come back to sit on our heels, take some zombie arms as a counter stretch to what we just did, find some movement in the neck. Ooh, I have a little bit of crunchy crunch going on in there. That's typical. Shake it out. Give yourself a little pat on the back. You did great. Okay, so that was downward facing dog. I have to say that this pose used to be my arch nemesis and that's because I was just so uncomfortable in the posture and it was in virtually every single yoga class that I went to. I was totally over it. But anyways, the more I experimented and played on my mat, the more ease I found in this posture. I also dropped the comparisons. I stopped caring about what the shape necessarily looked like and more focused in on how I felt in it. So anyways, that's just my two cents. 
Uh, if you liked the video, give it a like. Share this video with someone that you believe would benefit from exploring this posture. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the Yoga with Rachel channel. It is the best way to support free yoga content for all. Thank you so very much, everyone. Bye for now.